here with you today. It is currently the 10th of April, 2014. Today, big topic is severe tropical cyclone Ita, and we're watching this one come ashore, and it definitely has the potential to be a very severe and damaging storm system out here. You can see there on the satellite imagery, actually, I is really formed up around that center of circulation. We're getting away from some of the friction of Papua New Guinea, and it's moving out towards the Coral Sea. Much warmer waters there, less vertical wind shear, no friction to deal with it, and we're, we're seeing the intensification. We expect it to occur coming out of this tropical system as it approaches the Queensland coastline here. And if you are uh, in any of these areas which are now being warned on by the Bureau of Meteorology for tropical cyclone warnings, but not just that, uh, any of these areas that potentially... Are, uh, could be impacted just outside of the tropical cyclone warning areas. You want to be ready for this. You want to have your cyclone kits ready, and you want to uh, be aware of this storm system because it's not just areas along that center line. If we go back to the satellite picture, it's a pretty large system. And even as we see this come ashore here by Thursday evening, the outer rain bands, some of these could be packing damaging winds, heavy rainfall, and even the threat of isolated tornadoes, those rain-shrouded, weak tornadoes that often occur when systems come ashore and encounters the friction of the coastline and causes some spinning in the atmosphere, and that's what happens. So uh, it's a pretty large storm system. So as we look at the center line, from the Bureau of Meteorology, you, you do want to keep that in mind because it's areas along the southern periphery of that circulation where the right front quadrant is, and that's the highest threat of storm surge. And these winds, which we're expecting to be well over 200 kilometers per hour gusting as this comes ashore. So Cape Flattery down towards Cooktown, you're going to be hit by uh, potentially, well, not just damaging, but very serious and potentially deadly if you don't make the proper precaution type of winds and also the threat of storm surge. So let's take a look at some of the model outlooks here. Now, this is the ECMWF outlook. It's a little bit different from the JTWC. That's the Joint Typhoon Warning Center's track here just towards the south. The Bureau of Meteorology, actually more in line with the uh, ECMWF. They come on shore right between Cape Melville and Cape Flattery right there. So it's a little north. But like I said, it, it's these areas along the southern periphery of that center. That is the worst uh, of the storm and that's where you're going to be getting hit the hardest as this comes ashore so down towards cooktown a little bit farther inland you have laura i mean these areas you're going to be seeing those winds uh well over and let's go ahead and pull up some of the winds um, 56 kilometers per hour sustain. That's away from the center of circulation, up to about 80 to 90 sustain. And this is based on the model outlook. And I don't think once it gets above 100, the model doesn't really handle winds too well. So I'm going to take that away, actually, because a few of these areas out here could see gusting up to about 200 kilometers per hour. So it is these areas, though, south of that center of circulation, where you are going to see the highest threat of storm surge these damaging winds, and also the heavy rainfall. Now, if you're a farmer out here, you may be a little bit relieved. Uh, I can say that, actually, because uh, this is going to bring some much-needed rainfall a little bit farther inland. But always the problem when you get a tropical system, and people get it, they, they do say they need it's much-needed rainfall, but too much rain over a short period of time is nothing to be happy about. This is going to be causing that threat of flash flooding as it lingers. And it's not just far northern Queen down towards Kansas and eventually over towards Brisbane, you're going to be seeing some pretty heavy precipitation as this lingers uh, near the coastline. We have a passing trough down towards the south that's kind of hooking it off and pulling it off there towards the southeast. So all this precipitation is going to extend clear down towards Brisbane. Now, Brisbane, you're not going to see nearly as much rainfall as we saw back towards the north, but it is still going to be having some sort of impact on you. So if you are out here, do continue to check in with the Bureau of Meteorology. Latest track from the Joint Typhoon Warning Center. That's the U.S. military also expecting this to maintain, believe it or not, um, the equivalent of a typhoon uh, uh, or a Category 1 on the Saffron Simpson scale as it does pass over Cairns and eventually shoots off there towards the southeast. So this would, this would not be a very favorable scenario. It comes on shore, not over land for very long, and it keeps those warm waters of the coral sea within its grasp and it maintains that intensity and that is a very serious storm system and that is a, a wide of reaching effect storm system and likely the strongest storm to impact the queensland coast since cyclone yasi in 2011 so it, this is not one to take lightly 
if you are off here along the Queensland coastline, you want to be ready uh, for severe tropical cyclone Ita. Believe it or not, actually, and uh, we, we do want to talk about this really quickly. This storm system has also caused about 30 deaths and left I mean, several major cities just crippled in the Solomon Islands due to its lingering nature when it was developing back towards the east. So it's already caused catastrophic damage in some of these Pacific islands out here. Uh, just Google Solomon Islands uh, tropical or anything. Just Google Solomon Islands under news and you'll be able to find uh, some of the latest information on this storm system as it dropped just unprecedented amount of rainfall upwards about a thousand millimeters over the course of seven days in a few locations out here when the storm was over in that location. So uh, it, it is packing a punch. All right. That is all for right now, everybody. Our friends at Oz Cyclone Chasers, they're getting ahead of the storm system today. So please do go check out their latest video update. Also, they're going to be used streaming live uh, when they are out there chasing this uh, north of Cairns. I think they're going north of Cooktown. I'm not sure exactly their location. They're probably going to determine that as it does develop. But right now, <clears throat> if you are out there south of Cape uh, Melville, um, be ready for this. I think that those areas are going to be hit the hardest with uh, this. And I remember Yasi. Uh, everybody made preparations ahead of time, and I'm sure people are making preparations here. Yasi, the only death that occurred with that tropical system was somebody who died because they turned on their generator inside their house. And they died of carbon dioxide poisoning. So keep that in mind. There's a lot of factors that come into play here. If your electricity goes out, don't do that. All right. Stay safe out there, everybody.